Hi there and welcome back. Today I'm looking at yet another Sinclair and uh, again it's a ZX80 and I just got it uh, from a guy and he said that the problem was IX01 and uh, I guess it should be IC01 which uh, I remember is a Z80 CPU. Uh, but anyway, let's open it up and uh, see what happened to it. As you can see, this is the original shipping carton. I'm not sure whether this was sent for an upgrade or whether this is the original postage from uh, Sinclair. Uh, but it was recorded delivery and the postage was uh, £1.75. So it must be quite a few years back. And uh, at the back here it says uh, £20 and uh, fix or... Fix Fix 8 ROM i.e. update to ZX81 and for £19.95 and total required £39.95 so it was repaired and it had a Sinclair ZX81 ROM installed um, or the 8K ROM I should say because the contents is not identical to the ZX81 uh, so there you got it and there's a little label here to Sinclair Research Limited Stanhope Road Camberley Surrey GU15 3PS so it was sent back to Sinclair and uh, the guy who did it used plenty of tape uh, to be sure that nothing was uh, destroyed or ruined and of course Sinclair was famous for very slow support and indeed uh, very slow uh, anything really uh, when you ordered something it could take half a year before you got your stuff so I guess this guy had to be sure that it was repaired and uh... and yeah there we have the little guy uh, if you look at the front it looks kind of yellow if you look at the back it looks kind of white but uh, it has all the stickers and everything awesome it also has the manual, the original power supply and some TV cables of a dubious quality and here's the Sinclair ZX80 manual and uh, this is for the 4K basic I guess at least appendix 2 at the back talks about the 4K basic And uh, of course 4K is not a lot and uh, it was without support for the Sinclair printer which came later. And also it did not have support for um, floating point so you could only use integer characters. So yeah everything is complete here. The manual is in good shape and uh, hopefully so is the Sinclair itself. Now the Sinclair itself when it came uh, pre-assembled it came like this in a casing like this is basically two pieces of plastic the top piece and the bottom piece and uh, they use some little uh, plastic rivets kind of things uh, to hold the two pieces together and uh, they are infamous for uh, ruining the plastic uh, when you try to remove them and uh, you can see Sinclair originally they just put them in and snap them off and uh, they are very difficult to remove I think um, but uh, let's give it a go and see how that uh, pans out. Now I should have a little tool here. Oops. A little tool with a round thing at the bottom. Pop, and they just pop out like this. At least the first one did. Well, there we go. And the last one here. Now we have to take out the little pegs that uh, I just pushed out, well, like that, and now the rivets can come out from the other side. What one, two, three, four, five? Okay, and there we have it. It looks like the other one. Uh, except that there is some gunk on the PCB. 
and uh, the heatsink is a lot smaller than the one I had uh, made by myself. Okay, so I uh, plugged in the power supply and just went over it with a voltmeter to see that everything was uh, good before I plugged it into my little Sinclair and um, I only measured 5 volts, something a little bit, 5.5 uh, volts or something like that. So I hooked up the scope and uh, what have we got? Look at the output from the power supply. Uh, that does not look great. So hopefully the problem with my Sinclair is not IX01, whatever that is, but uh, the power supply itself. So yeah, something something needs to be fixed here first. Okay, and let's open it up. And it looks like shite, like everything Sinclair ever did. Uh, ah, the capacitor is is not soldered. So let's uh, solder that back, and uh, hopefully that will fix our supply problem. Okay, one solder. And we have about 15 volts now and it's nice and smooth. So that was the first step in our quest to fix this Sinclair machine. So now that the power supply is uh, okay, let's try and plug it into a TV and uh, see whether that didn't fix the problem. Yeah, and I plugged it in and uh, really there's nothing. Uh, the TV has some kind of flickering noise on it, but uh, it's definitely not a video output signal from the Sinclair. So we got to do some more fault finding. Okay, so as we just saw, it looks like the video modulator is working because there is some kind of a, a, a blank screen. So it really resembles the issue that we had earlier on the, my other Sinclair machine. That the video clock seems to be running and there seems to be some video out but there's no pixel data. It may be a little bit more than that because also there's no cursor in this case. Uh, let's just measure all the supply voltages for all the chips first. Uh, that is normally a good indication. Oh, oh. Power, 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 and that is really strange. This IC, IC21 has no power, and that is exactly the same problem as on my other Sinclair ZX80. That could be a common problem with the Sinclairs here. Uh, unfortunately on this board here, this is an issue too. On this board all the ICs have been uh, soldered in and they are not in sockets. So I can't really have a closer look on the PCB. Um, so I have to solder a wire just like uh, on the other one. So yeah, I got it out of the enclosure and uh, the PCB quality looks much better on this one than my other Sinclair ZX80. Um, and uh, one interesting little thing is that you can see someone has uh, soldered the resistor on the cassette input connector and uh, of course the ZX80 had a lot of problems with loading from cassette so I guess someone has uh, read something in a magazine or something and uh, tried to fix it. Let's just quickly solder that uh, supply wire here. But okay that's it we have soldered power to this chip and uh, let's plug it in again and see whether that works. Yep, and I plugged it in and uh, really there's nothing. Okay, so let's see if we have any clock to the CPU. That should be pin 6. And uh, it looks like we do have a clock here. And uh, it's 3.2 megahertz, which is, uh, I guess, correct. If, if I'm not wrong, this is 6.5 MHz divided by 2, so it would be 3.25, and that's okay. And uh, yeah, while I'm waiting for my PC to boot up so I can take a look at the schematic, uh, I actually found a problem already. Because if you look at the ROM, these are the output from the ROM. And uh, nothing whatsoever. So, uh, it looks like 
the guy who sold me this machine was right the IX1 or what I would like to call IC1 the Z80 CPU is uh, maybe not running uh, so let's try and just swap that one out first and uh, see what happens and yeah as you can see I have some kind of video picture now but the picture is kind of rolling whoops there we go and uh, it loses sync and uh, whoop there we go again and it loses sync and um, I've seen that once on my grandparents TV and uh, it looks like there's some kind of power supply hum on top of the video signal if I just move the camera back uh, you can actually see that on the oscilloscope so just one second and here I have a capture of the video and uh, we can see that the supply is dropping uh, here and here it's much cleaner you can see it rolling in here whoops there we go and again rolling there we go I got my flug out and uh, let's just ohm this thing and we have 0.6 volts across this dial drop which is okay 0.6 volt across here and a short here so yeah the diode bridge needs to be changed and uh, then we should have sufficient voltage for the Sinclair to run properly and uh, yeah I'm sorry I had to do that off camera the legs on the capacitor was not long enough so I had to extend them with a bit of wire and uh, that was a little bit messy uh, but anyway it's done and uh, I think we should just plug it in and check our power supply and uh, then uh, just verify that the video is now okay I've now plugged it in and uh, let's just take a look at the output from the power supply and uh, there's a lot of volts here and it looks it looks clean enough but uh, let's plug it into the ZX80 and draw some current and uh, and look at that, we have video and I can do some stuff. 10, print, I guess, print, yes. And, yeah, where I, there's so much glare here, I can't see the keyboard. Print, and there should be some exclamation marks or whatever you call it, quotation marks on this keyboard somewhere. Where are they, where are they, are they there? Yes, there, there. Print. Hello. World. And another pair. Whoop. And new line and 20. Go to 10. Enter. And let's run it and be amazed. Run. Enter. Whoa. Hello world. And I have one more working Sinclair ZX80. And this time with the 4K ROM, the original little one. Uh, again the CPU was bad and uh, one of the ICs, the same IC as the other machine, did not have power. And uh, because of my experience with the TVs, it was quite obvious that uh, the funny drifting of the TV picture was uh, due to a power supply issue. So. Uh, that was easily fixed and uh, I think it didn't take more than uh, about an hour this time to repair my ZX80. And now I have one more ZX80, this time uh, an early version with a 4K ROM complete with manuals and packaging box and everything. I can't tell you how happy I am. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you again real soon.